God. Let's just give Jesus another praise offering. Amen. Come on. He's the King of Kings and He is the Lord of Lords. He is the one who was, who is, and He is to come. Amen. He always will be on the throne. Amen. And He's our Lord. Amen. Good evening, family. It's such a great privilege and honor to be here. Um, I really, I love this church. Thank you for being my home in America. I really love you. I love your church. I love your pastors. I've never seen pastors loving on people like your pastors. And I do travel all around the world, but it's just amazing what I see in this church. You are so privileged. You are so blessed to have pastors like this in the church. You know, Pastor Brian, Pastor Rona, Pastor Philip, Pastor Amy, Pastor Stephen, Pastor Tina. Great pastors. Amazing pastors. World-class pastors. Over and above and even go the extra mile. I mean, and, yeah, I've, and the energy they've got. I mean, <laughs> they've got some go in them. I mean, I've been traveling with them some bit. And uh, I'm telling you, Pastor Rhonda, she's really got energy. <laughs> she, she makes things happen. And they happen quickly. <laughs> they happen quickly. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for tonight? I'm excited about this week. I know that God's going to drop something in your spirit and major transformation is going to take place in your life. What I sense here is that this church, this ministry has tapped into the flow of the Holy Spirit in so many ways. And something wonderful is, hap- is starting to happen in this place. I know that it's been great until now, but it's going to be much greater. It's going to be much more fulfilling. It's going to be much more, um, the word I make, you're going to see the supernatural way as ordinary in this place. Um, I really see people pushing in the spirit, and it's like they're opening up gateways in the spirit. And it's like doors opening and allowing a flood to come in. And you are wanting God to change your life. You are inviting God to transform your life. You know, the Word of God says, if you draw unto me, I'll draw near to you. So, you know, God, we don't, God doesn't determine the level of intimacy in our lives. We determine the level of intimacy in our lives. So God's already done everything needed to be done for us that, to have that intimate relationship with the Lord. So we determine that level of intimacy. And I see a rise of intimacy in this church that's never been experienced in Augusta before. Never. And yesterday, I had the privilege to be praying with the the people yesterday morning, the prayer group, and it was such a great time. I'm a man of prayer. I love love praying because I'm so dependent on prayer. (laughs) I I really can't do anything without prayer. I can't do anything without the Lord. I'm really like a zero without the Lord. You know, that's it. There's nothing without you. <laughs> you know, and, and if you look at my life, if you see things you don't like, that's Didi. If you see things you love, that's God. You know, that's, that's the way it is. You know, that's just the way it is. That's the way God put me together. And I mean, I, my conscience really bugs me for the smallest thing. I just want, don't want anything to, be, to come between me and God. Like if I just, if, if I say something and I know my motive was right, but maybe it just sounded not good, I'll just phone you before we go to bed. Because I don't want this to bug me. Um, I just want open channels with the Lord. And I just want to be a conduit to the Lord. And, you know, and we can only be a conduit to the Lord if we get rid of stuff in our life. And you know, not hold on to offense and bitterness and self-entitlement. And just, just allow God to be God in your life. And just allow God to, to set things in order in your life. And just allow God to be God. Easy. It's very simple. It's actually very simple. But yesterday when we were in the prayer, in prayer time, I, Pastor Ron asked me to, to, to come and pray. And as I started praying, I saw this huge ship over Augusta. I, couldn't, I, I was wondering, well, Augusta is like far away from the coast. Why do I see a ship? And this was like a ship that was high above the soil of Augusta, and there was water between, of course, water between the ship and the soil. And then I saw an anchor going down from the ship, but this huge, with this huge cable on this anchor. And this anchor was totally 
buried in the soil. And on the ship, and it was holding the ship steady and strong. The ship, you could see, you can't move it. The ship was like stationary over Augusta. And then on the ship, I saw people working. It was not a cruise liner, man. You see, because, I mean, the church is not a hotel. Okay? The church is a place where we come to serve. If you want to be served, get yourself a hotel. You're now in the church. Amen. <laughs> because, I mean, serving is part of the nature of God. <laughs> Jesus came to serve, came to wash the disciples' feet. He came to lay down his life so that we could know him and have a relationship with him and be connected to him, just like Adam and Eve was connected to God in the, Adam of, in the Garden of Eden. And we could be dressed in his glory again. That's amazing what Jesus came to do. And so today we are so connected and, and we have such a privilege to be able to walk with the Lord like in the Garden of Eden. To experience him fully and be captured by his word and not captured by a lie. Where so many people are today. You know, Satan's been defeated. He's got no feet. He's been totally like choop, cut off to the feet, man. He's, got, he's defeated. So we can't preach a devil back into business in our lives because he shouldn't have any business. Come on. Come on. I'm just flowing with the Holy Spirit here. I don't even know where I'm going. <laughs> so, but you, you're just hanging there. We'll go somewhere. The Holy Spirit is taking us somewhere. So, Satan's defeated in our lives. But, you know, there is still some, in all of us, a residue of a fallen mindset. We all got born again. If you're born again, you see that in this church, God's utilizing this church to confront your mindset. Confront any residue of a fallen mindset. To confront every opinion you've maybe taken on from your parents. What they said about you or your friends or a teacher. Because God doesn't want you to live according to the opinion of others. God wants you to live according to his word. And what he says about you. Amen. And so I do see your, this church. I'm, so, I'm coming back to this ch ship. Don't worry. <laughs> going back to the ship. But I do see this church as a huge vessel that's institution. That's the in institution of Christ. Being stationed over Augusta to break the strongholds of the enemy and to reveal the glory of God for the city yes. because the soil of Augusta is blessed. Now listen. On this ship, there was people working, not playing around. They were working and they were working day and night because I saw the ship in daytime and I saw the ship in nighttime and I saw all the lights going on. And I saw the people in the lounges and I saw the people in the offices and in cabins and they were just joyful people. And this is new life. They were people that were excited about what the Lord is doing. And the Lord was alive in every facet of their life. The Lord was moving in every facet of their life and they all had certain instructions and certain assignments they had to fulfill. But then also from the ship I would see Little vessels being dropped down into the water. And those vessels were sent out over the globe to go and do some things for the Lord, yeah. the four corners of the globe, to fulfill assignments and to bring to the ends of the earth what God is doing in Augusta because God's doing something very special in this place. Yes. And you need to know that. You need to know that. You know why? Because you're pressing in. This can happen everywhere. But... When we lean into and we flow with the Holy Spirit, great things happen. Yes. Yes. And great things are happening here in this church. Great things are happening in your life. And it's amazing. And I want to tell you, you may be seated here tonight and saying, I've, I've, I'm, I've fallen in love with Jesus. There, you haven't seen anything yet. You're going to fall more and more and more in love with Jesus because of what you're going to see what Jesus is going to do in this place. You're going to see more and more. So the ship represents what God has put together for his purpose. 
And God is in a process with this purpose. <laughs> and God is shaping and forming your life so that you can find your niche on the ship. <laughs> so I want to tell you, you can expect pressure and expect, expect a demand from the Holy Spirit on your life. Because the demand of the Holy Spirit will be knocking at your door in this season like never before. And there's an, an intention. I'm prophesying here. But there's an intention within, the, within your spirit, which is there from the Holy Spirit. You see, the kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's in the Word. You don't believe me? I can't just say anything. You must check me. Okay? But the Word of God says in Romans 14, verse 7, 17 in the Passion Translation, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of rules about food and drink. It is in the realm of the Holy Spirit, filled with righteousness, peace, and joy. So in other words, if we operate in our natural mind, we operate outside the kingdom of God. If we operate in accordance to natural thinking, we operate outside of the kingdom of God. So we want to operate in the Holy Spirit so we can operate according to what the kingdom of God wants for our lives. And that gets birthed into the natural because I spent my time in the supernatural. So the more I spend my time in the supernatural, I give birth to babies in my life. Hello? Because that's what's happened. That's what happens with intimacy. Can't stop it. You can be a man or woman, whatever. God is spirit. God's not a man or a woman. God is spirit. Hello. I'm shocking a few people here, but God is spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I know that we're talking the word, the word uh, about, you know, him and God. But I mean, God at the end of the day, he's spirit. Right. He's spirit. And so when we press into the Lord, when we press into the Holy Spirit, we give, we have intimacy and we birth the things of God into our lives. In the supernatural. We take it out and we bring it to the natural. And the will of God is being manifested. In the natural. Amen? Amen. Woo. So okay, I'm coming back to the ship now. So I saw this ship and I asked God, okay, what does all this represent? Now some of this I could figure out the moment I got the vision. But then the Lord said, the anchor is the soil, of, the anchor is the word that is rooted firmly in the soil of Augusta through Amen. new life. Okay? So God has sent this church to, to teach the word. Not a, not a compromised word. Amen. Not a seeker-friendly word. <laughs> not a, a soft word. A word that will bring transformation. Because you see, when we're in covenant with God, God doesn't want coming to agreement with us just to have an agreement. He comes into covenant with us to transform our lives. Yes. That's it. So when you're in covenant with God, there's transformation. It will take place. Okay. And so the, the, the cable that's prayed holds everything together. It holds everything together. And the water between the ship and the earth, that's the drenching and the flooding of the Holy Spirit over Augusta. So you can expect a lot of flooding of the Spirit yes. in this place. And some people, are, I'm, I'm hearing the Spirit of the Lord saying, some people are knocking on heaven's door yes. and so, through prayer. Some people hear your prayer life. If I've, Okay, let me ask this. How many of you's prayer life has really like ignited the last three months in this church? Raise your hand. It's ignited, just gone to another level. Look at this. Look at this, what God's doing. It's like you're feeling the presence of God like never before in your life at this season. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. 
So this is a word that I wanted to share with you tonight. And this is what I experienced. I had so many, I just got like, in my heart, I, I mean, I cry for these days for nothing. You know, I just start sobbing for anything. Because God has just done something in my heart a few weeks ago. And uh, I just am very more sensitive to the spirit than I was before. And I praise God for that. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. So, tonight, are you all ready for the word? Okay, so now we need to pray first. Are you okay with that? <laughs> Father God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you, Father God, for the special moment, for a special time in your presence. Oh, Father God, you are so dear to us. We love you with all our hearts. Tonight, Father God, I bring each individual that's seated under the sound of my voice in this place. And anyone looking through live streaming, Father, I pray for each person that each person will experience a service being held in the atmosphere of eternity. Where people will experience, each individual will experience a service being held within the four walls of your throne room. That they will not experience a man's voice, man's touch, or anything of man. But they will experience your voice, your touch, your revelation, what you want for each person in this place. Thank you, Father God, that intention, Holy Spirit intention in every heart comes strong fourthly. It come, comes forth strongly in every, person's, in every person's life. And that people will take on, discern the intention and act on the Holy Spirit's intention in their lives. And Father God, see things moving supernaturally in their lives. Breakthrough coming to every house. Breakthrough coming to every mind. Breakthrough coming, Father, to to finances in people's lives. And Father God, disease leaving people's bodies. Any infirmity leaving people's bodies in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, for people's hearts that are being touched and changed. Every discouragement that might be in any heart tonight, that discouragement will melt away and be taken away and just melt and taken off. And courage will fill every heart in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, for the privilege I have to, to be able to minister to your precious people. And I ask you to bless them in a special way tonight. And bless the leadership in this church in a special way. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So tonight I want to talk to you about aligning my design with my present and future. You know, when you, uh, your, your vertebrae, or yeah, when your back is a bit out of, uh, you know, alignment. You go to a chiropractor to get some uh, adjustment. <laughs> and that's why we need to come to church, and that's why we need to spend time with godly people, because we need some adjustment <laughs> on a weekly basis and get our, our, our backs, our spiritual backs back into shape, you know, and some thinking back into alignment again. And so tonight, I pray that this will happen in your life, just to bring some adjustment if any adjustment is required. But the Word of God says in Romans 14, verse 17 to 18 in the Message Translation, it says, God's kingdom isn't a matter of what you put into your stomach. It says, for goodness sake. That's not, you know, life is not only about food. <laughs> it goes on to say, it's what God does with your life as He sets it right, puts it together, and completes it with joy. It says your task is to single-mindedly serve Christ. So if we want to really grow in the Lord, we need to become single-minded and allow the double-mindedness just to, to die down. Amen. Stop going back to the old ways of doing things. Stop going back to the old habits. Stop running back to making debt to get out of a situation. But start running to God and, and really trust God for your breakthrough. Because God can move people's lives and to favor you. <laughs> Amen. Amen? So God wants us and God's desire for us is to become single-minded in what we do. Become focused. Become fixated. Literally fixated on what His Word says about our lives. Amen. Do that and you'll kill two birds with one stone. Pleasing the God above you 
and proving your worth to the people around you. Wow, that's amazing. That's great. Who of you wants to be a blessing to others? Who of you would like just to buy someone a car, just, you know, get some people out of debt, just because you've got overflow in your life? God says, I can create overflow in your life because I'm your God. If you press into me, you stand on my promise and you apply the principle to the promise, guess what? I'll come through for you. I'll supply all your needs according to my riches in glory through Christ Jesus. That's just a promise. And there are many of them. There are more than 7,000 promises in the word. And like I said early on in Romans 14, 17, the passion translation for the kingdom of God is not a matter of food and drink. And when you're a Frenchman and living in France, I mean, you really stand on the scripture because you love the food in France. Amen. <laughs> it's really tough there <laughs> because you just want to eat everything you see. <laughs> I just spent about two weeks before I came to America in France at my son. Because we've, our first grandson got, yeah. grandson got born. And I've been now a grandfather for about three weeks, and I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> Holding my grandson in my hand for the first time, in my arms for the first time in my life, it just opened up a room in my heart that I never knew I, I had. Wow. Never knew I had. I mean, it was just amazing. It's amazing. Our hearts are so big, we don't even understand how big our spirit, our spirit man is. There's a vastness to the spirit that is unexplicable. When you talk about the heart, we don't talk about your blood pump. <laughs> I don't talk about something where you need to take pills for cholesterol. I'm talking about your spirit man, who you really are. And that spirit man has been made formed and shaped and created by God to be intimate with Him. And it's so vast. Actually, you don't have the vocabulary to explain how vast this right. is. Or even the understanding to understand it fully. I think the day when, we, when I will, you know, close up this tent and leave this body, I'll maybe start understanding it more. <laughs> but I, I do understand in a, in a sense that this spirit needs to be protected, guarded, and fed with the right things. Amen. Yes. So they can accomplish everything that God has intended for it. So it says, but in the realm of the Holy Spirit, um, what did I say here? Okay. The kingdom of God is in the realm of the Holy Spirit, full of righteousness, peace, and joy. You know, I've heard this many times. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. I tend to disagree. I've seen the Holy Spirit work and he didn't care if I was looking good or not. Right. <laughs> I've seen people, uh, demons casted out of demons, the Holy Spirit just by the finger of God. Boom! Right. Cast out of demons, people are just flying over the floor, glasses lying everywhere. Halfway out of their shirt. The Holy Spirit doesn't care. <laughs> just cares about delivering you. Right. Just cares about bringing freedom to you and, right. and filling you with the peace of God where there's nothing missing, nothing broken. Right. That's the Holy Spirit. I remember the first time I was three weeks old in the Lord. Three weeks. I was at the age of 17, 34 years ago. And... Pastor Theo said, okay, it was a huge auditorium, 3,000 seater. He said, anyone who wants hands laid on them, just stand up. And so the whole church got up. 3,000 people, I was one of them. And he said, I want to lay hands on you. You stand all around the auditorium, right around against the walls. And I went and I stood around, I stood at a place against the wall. And he came with Pastor Bev, and he was praying for people, and people were dropping like flies. Doof, doof. I was looking at this, thinking, what's happening in this place? <laughs> this is a strange thing. <laughs> so I thought, okay, good. I'm not going to fall. I'm strong. <laughs> so I anchored myself, literally. And I was waiting for him like this. Like this. <laughs> you see? Uh, you see, there's something about me. I want, I, because... I, I, I do place a, a high premium on authenticity. Right. I've always actually been like that even before I met the Lord. I just love 
being who I am. There's no, my face is on my shoulder, of my heart's on my shoulder, you know, that's it. It's on my face. I mean, you, what you see here, yeah, that's, what you, what you see, well, that's it, yeah. So I was standing there. Thank you, Pastor Rana. Pastor Rana preaches for me sometimes. <laughs> 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 so I, was, I was standing like this and I was waiting I was checking this pastor here this couple coming I said okay and as he was about two people away from me I felt a presence that I was thinking what's happening here and then when I and then all of a sudden I, don't, I, can't, I couldn't even remember him placing his hands on me but the spirit of God knocked me out cold I cold yeah he took me about three, four meters backwards. I was lying between the chairs. <laughs> and I remember when I, when I got to my senses, I mean, my knees were shaking. I was like trembling. And I thought, what happened? What happened? And I got up and I could literally not walk. I was like holding on to the chairs. I'm 17 years old, playing rugby. I'm strong. And I didn't look good. I looked conf- like... Drunk. I mean, before then I got drunk on other stuff, but now I'm in church and I get drunk. Soberly intoxicated. I got soberly intoxicated by the Holy Spirit. And then I understood the Holy Spirit is not a gentleman. He didn't ask me if I wanted to fall down. He didn't. Excuse me, if he was a gentleman, he would have asked, do you want to fall down? (laughs) Ask me. I'll make you fall down. I didn't want to fall down. I thought I was going to stand. I wanted to know this is real. And so the Holy Spirit showed me he's real. He's real. But you see, there's an intention within you, a supernatural intention within you that the Holy Spirit placed within us. So that is powerful, strong, and it's a pulsating energy that continues to pulsate through your whole being. And God wants us to take notice of it, act on it, so that he can have his way <coughs> through us. Right. Now, everything God creates has intention built into it. Right. Everything. A wildebeest doesn't need to be told he's a wildebeest. He will act like a wildebeest because he's intended to be a wildebeest. He's got an intention with, within him. A mosquito has got intention within him. He wants to suck the blood out of you. (laughs) He's got intention built into him. And so the Holy Spirit has intention that's there for you. He wants to take that, he wants you to to take hold of that intention. And we know that intention without action is nothing. Nothing. But we have a pulsation, an energy that's taking place in our spirit, and the Holy Spirit wants us. To recognize it. Am I making sense to you? It's not even in my notes what I'm sharing with you now. And so, we build our lives according to the word of God. Amen? You don't build our lives according to opinions and stuff. But the word of God says also in John 1 verse 12, he says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. Then the word of God also says in James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25 in the New Living Translation, he says, but don't just listen to God's word. That's what so many of us do. Just think about all the word you've heard in your life and just think about all the word you apply. Is there a difference? But you see, when God wants you to hear word, he makes you to hear the word, but then he wants you to act on the word. His intention for you is act on the word. That's his intention for you. You must do what it says, the word of God says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. I don't want to be fooled, man. Me neither. Uh -uh. I don't want to be a I don't want to go through this life being fooled. Me neither. I don't want to be captured by a lie. I want to be captured by the word of God and the Spirit of God. And I want to live my authentic life that God has predestined before the foundations of this earth. 
And God made it possible for me by sending Jesus Christ as his only son. I've been bought free. I'm not a slave anymore. I'm not an orphan anymore. I'm a son. I'm a daughter of the most high God. And I walk in his power and I walk in his authority. And my life is being structured according to the kingdom of God, which is found in the Holy Spirit. But you see, I need to embrace the word. I need to own it. I need to work it. I need, I need to make it my own. And so what do I do? Okay, let's go before I do that. Let's go on with verse 23. It says, For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. So in other words, what does, the word, what does God actually say? He says, when you read the word, you see yourself. Because the word is a mirror. The word is who you are. The word is what I created you to be. So this is why the word became flesh. Jesus Christ became flesh. And he dwelt among us. Before then, he was face to face with God. But it was never written. He had to come to earth for us to see him. So we could... See, who, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Right. Right. And Jesus said, if the things that I do, you shall do also. What did he do? Woo! Yeah. Oh, wow. He raised the, the dead. Yeah. I mean, he prayed for the sick. I mean, he walked on water. Yeah. I mean, he did crazy stuff. And Jesus says, the things that I've done, you shall do also. So Jesus actually came to introduce us to ourselves again, to remind us who we are. That's what he did. That's what Jesus did. He came to introduce us to ourselves again. The word of God says in verse 23, For if you listen to the word and don't obey, you lost glancing at your face in a mirror. And I know you, look, you like looking at yourself. Amen. I said yesterday to the leadership, when I go shopping, I look for the for biggest mirror. Because I like looking at myself. I check myself and say, Ooh. And then I see this mirror is not telling the truth. So I go and find another one. I do. I do. Because I've, I've come to realize some mirrors make me leaner. They actually tell the truth. <laughs> so you don't want to look in mirrors that doesn't tell the truth. The only one that tells the truth is the word of God, the uncompromised word of God. And that's what I make my own. I'm not going to make the opinion of others my own. Right. You can't tell me who I am. The only one who can tell me who I am is God himself. He's my creator. Amen. And I'm created in his image and in his likeness. And this is my manual. And I work according to this manual. If you want to, you know, some, uh, we, we buy some technology in our lives. You know, like you buy like a... Uh, DVD player. Well, the only thing I know about a DVD player is open it, put in the DVD, and close it, and play. It's got many, many other functions, but I don't know about it, because I don't take time to, to study the manual. When I buy stuff, you know, I don't, I'm like a, a, a lazy reader, you know. I would just look at this and say, okay, this is how I get it symboled in my mind. Okay. So I'm, so I'm start, when I start, then I'm halfway through, I say, oh my word, what's happening here? I got this whole thing messed up because I didn't read the manual. If we don't read the manual, we'll get messed up. We'll really literally get messed up. We need to read the manual and apply the manual to our lives. Come on, man. God doesn't, God doesn't anoint anything else but the truth. Doesn't. I want to be anointed. <laughs> Because you see, the anointing equips me for my task, for my assignment. If you don't apply the truth, you won't walk in the anointing. Okay. You can't miss Sunday. You're going to be blessed on Sunday. Verse 24 says, you see yourself, walk away and forget what you look like. So most Christians do window shopping. I don't like window shopping. I literally, what I see, I want it. Yeah, if I would, I want it. I go in, I take it, I pay for it. 
Amen. <laughs> Again, but verse 25 says, But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Wow. That's amazing. Amazing. So, when I read the word and I press into the Lord, because the, 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 the kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So what do I do? I take hold of the word. We read the word every day. Who of you has had the experience, sometimes you read the word, or many times you read the word, and all of a sudden, bam! Yeah. I want to tell you, you take that scripture, put it, put it in the journal, make it part of your confessions, and confess that word. Because this is what happens. When you take the word and you come into the Holy Spirit, you cannot go and pray in the Holy Spirit and press into the Holy Spirit with Facebook. Listen here. You cannot go and press into the Holy Spirit doing other stuff, sending texts and going crazy. The Holy Spirit wants your full attention. He is God. Come on, I'm teaching you something here. You give your undivided attention to the Holy Spirit. And so you come to the Holy Spirit with the word which you have received. Now God gives us different words for different seasons we are in. So God will give you an arsenal of weapons and an arsenal of ammunition for the season you are in. Because God equips you to break down strongholds. God equips you to, to enter territories and to, to, to conquer territories. God equips you to progress, and God equips you to expand. God equips you to grow from glory to glory. So what happens is you take the word that God shared with you, and you pray in the Holy Spirit, and you get lost in the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden, while you're still meditating on the word, an explosion in your heart takes place, and you understand the kingdom of God in this facet, and you understand what God is saying to you in this facet, and you understand where God, what, what God wants you to do, and you understand how to apply this revelation. And so this promise that God has given you creates destiny, creates purpose, creates breakthrough, it's like Google Maps. When you know where you want to go, listen to this. You put in the destination. And then it says, from where do you want to go? From my location, thank you. And then you say, okay. Now, the moment you hit start, what happens? The destination and the location gets boom. And all you need to do is drive. Follow the instruction. You extract it from the kingdom of God what needs to be birthed on this earth and you will reach your destination. That's Rhema. That's Rhema. I've just started. Now you guys must go to work and school. I've got so much to share. Can I share that tomorrow night? <laughs> Just another five, three minutes, maybe. Okay, huh? Wow, you guys got some stamina, eh? <laughs> Praise God. Just three minutes. So, so the primary reason that Jesus came to the surf was to introduce us to ourselves. The only Bible many people, most people will read is looking at your life. So we need the mirror to work in our lives. <laughs> we need to embrace the mirror when we read it. The Word of God is our mirror. The way we were designed and engineered to operate. And we all like looking at ourselves. So let's look at the real picture, the authentic picture. My parents, can't, your parents can't tell you who you are. If they declare the word over your life, that's who you are. Your success doesn't define you in life. Because I've learned that when you walk with God, God will always call you out of your success into sacrifice again. You never make, you never make it. 
So keep your head small and your heart big. Don't get a big head. Don't get a big head. Or puffed up. <laughs> you need a little needle to take you down. You're also not your mistakes. And you're also not your failures. You're not. And you're also not your emotions. So never become the emotion you feel. Become the word. Experience the joy of the Lord. Your reputation doesn't determine your future. We all got a past. All of us. And neither does it give you your identity today. Never accommodate yourself to the opinions, desires, and interests of others. What I do in my life, I choose to agree with God. You see, life, I mean, to grow in the Word is a choice you make. And we need to do things on purpose to achieve success. Success doesn't just come into your life, you plan success. So I want to plan to grow. I want to plan to have my life shaped by integrity. I choose that. So I want to choose to be a man of character. I want to choose to be a man of integrity. You see, it's a choice. So we need to make proclamations for, that's what I do. I'm just giving you this nugget. Then I'm going to minister for two or three people. Then we close. Then you come back tomorrow night. Amen. 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 <laughs> but I choose to be a man of character. So what I do is I make proclamations every day in my life. You see, I say, I choose to agree with God, to love, peace, and hope of God. Uh, to, the love, peace, and hope of God is more and more evident in and through me every day. Right. Today, I choose to agree with God. I've spent time with the lover of my soul, and I'm fully able to love people really, really well. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Today, I choose to agree with God. I love and honor all people. I respond to people in kindness and love. What do I do? I arm myself for the day. I arm my heart, my soul, my thinking, my mindset for the day. You see, the only way you can stop your thinking, to, st to st stop your negative thinking to go in one way, the only way you can do that is to start talking. Because the moment you talk, you interrupt your thoughts. You try it. Try it. So just now when you, your thoughts want to go negatively, think about a scripture. Proclaim it, and then your thought goes, whoop! Yep, come on. It has to shut up, and it has to align itself to the Word. So you have to confess the Word, work the Word, talk the Word, because the spiritual realm is very, very sensitive to the Word. The words you speak, whether they are negative or positive, when you speak negatively, guess what? You call in the spirits of darkness. When you talk positively, you, talk, you, you call in God's way, God's angels, and you arm them to work. Oh, pastor, you know, I've got so many problems. I'm so down. I'm right. And before you know it, you're in a hole of depression. Yes. And the evil spirits are all over you and just trying to discourage you. So that's when you need a brother and a sister to come and Church. help Church. you. Church. Jerk you out of the mess. Right. Amen. Put on, you know, those art, those art machines that goes, you put it on the chest, go boom. <laughs> boom. They need to resuscitate you back into truth again. Right. It's true. It's true. Amen. Amen. I'm going to leave you right there. You can't miss tomorrow night. Is that okay? Yeah. Can't miss tomorrow night. Amen. Amen. Your name? John again. John, hey. If I remember right. Yes. I prophesied over you a few months ago. Okay, can you stand please? And your wife as well. Um, Ma'am, where do you come from? No, you, 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 yeah. yeah. Am I looking straight? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Where do you come from? Stand up, please. Where do you come from? Uh, North Augusta. North Augusta. How long have you been in this church? Um, we just started. Four weeks ago. Wow. Yeah. What do you do? You know storms in life. Yeah. And a real big storm has hit your family. Yeah. And he's really shaken you to the core of your foundation, to real to the <laughs> deepest parts of your soul. God has actually called you here to bring restoration, healing, and bring the inheritance that he's got for you right up front so you can see it. So Satan has tried to has done his best to kill, steal, and destroy. But God has come to give you life and life in abundance. So I want to tell you right now, there's an amazing protection of God over your life. Amazing. The Satan has really tried to take you out. You know what's depression. You know what's, what it is to, to just be pushed away. Okay. You, God says you forgive, you let go. It's a new day for you. But as I'm speaking to you, listen to me. Right now, you're going to feel this. If you didn't, don't feel it yet, there's a warmth in your neck. Uh-huh. Is that so? Yes. Very hot, eh? Yeah. Hey? yeah, it's all over. Uh, but <laughs> extremely at the back. Yeah. Yeah. You know what that is? There's an angel standing right behind you. Angel of God that's been assigned to you to protect you. There's no demon in hell that's able to touch you. God wants you to know. God wants you to know that He separated you and sanctified you and set you apart for His work. God, you are a godly woman. You are a woman that wants to see the truth. You are. And don't allow Satan's attacks to tell you otherwise. You are worthy of the call of God. You are valued. You are precious. You are His daughter and He loves you. And you don't need to change to be accepted. Okay? God says, I love you as you are. And God says, I enjoy the way you are. God bless you. God bless you. Wow. When I look at you, I say, wow. I see you with a shuffle in your, in your hand. I'm trying to determine what's God trying to show me here. Shuffle in his hand. You're digging deep, man. You're going for the Lord. But it's not always been that easy. It's like, this, it's like a generational thing that wants to come back into your life. It's like knocking at your door. It's like a spirit that's come down for generations in your bloodline. And it's really tried to push in habits and get back into your life. The spirit of God has, has, re, has really resisted this. And at times you really thought you're going to crack. You're not going to make it. Is that true? Okay. I want to tell you. That you can. And these demons has to go. They cannot take you. They cannot abort the plan of God for your life. And you're digging deep because you want the principles of God to work for you. Come closer, you and your wife. Come closer. You want the word, the word of God to work for you. And God says, my word will work for you tremendously and powerfully and strongly. But God will not, not allow any demon force to destroy your life. Okay? I needed that. Yeah. I really needed that. So I want to tell you today that the Lord is encouraging you and telling me to tell you that He's fighting for you. Okay? He's fighting for you and He's protecting you. I see literally, you know, Job was protected by a wall of fire around, right around him. I literally see fire around you, a hedge. Fire. That's the word I was looking for. You guys must help me, man. I come from South Africa. I see a hedge of fire right around you. And the Lord loves you. You, you must need, you must know that. I do. Okay. Raise your hands to the Lord, both of you. Ebrando, the power of God will be on you now. Ebrando, ye brekeste bra yorodoboshta braka. I cast, I resist. I command every evil force that has come from generational um, 
from, the, from generations in the bloodline that wants to destroy this family. I cast you away and I command you to leave this family in the name of Jesus. Go, yes. go, 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 go. There's the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Ne brando doro bobosta brekeste. Ne brando doro boste breke. Is there someone that's got, you've got like a 10 out of 10 pain in your body? 10 out of 10. You're sitting here, you've got pain. 10 out of 10. Where are you? Come here. What's wrong with you? I can't hear you. Come here. Sorry. Are you, what's wrong with you? Raise your hands to Jesus. Do you believe that Jesus can heal you? Yes. Do you believe that he can take all the pain away? Yes. Okay, raise your hands to the Lord. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. There it is now already. You feel the heat on your lower back? You feel that? You feel that? It's coming on you now. Say, Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for your healing power. Flowing through my body. Flowing through my body. In Jesus' name. God's working on you. That's it. He's working on you. You feel between your shoulders there's a tremendous heat there as well. You feel that? You feel that? Okay. That's the presence of God. He's healing you. He's healing you. He's actually touching your left leg as well. You're standing on your left leg, but he's touching. It's getting all hot. You feel that? Okay. Just stay. Close your eyes. Just enjoy the presence of God. God heals you. Okay. Now that same presence is also going down your right leg. Okay. Do you have like pain in your left shoulder as well? Um, Periodically, um, but God's sorry. fixing there, some, something there um, as well. I get pain and numbness. Um, if I lean on this area, I'll get pain and numbness. Something's wrong there. Uh, something was wrong there, but God's fixing it. Okay. Nebrando, okay. what's your name? Rachel. Rachel. Ebrando ye brekeste bra yo rodo boboshta bra ka yo osma bre e o brekiere do sta brando ma brando do roboshte you healed you are healed you are healed you are healed you are healed say thank you jesus i'm healed all the pain is gone all the pain is gone my spine my spine is being totally healed now in jesus name all the nervous nerves nervous all the nerves are being healed right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You are healed. You will have no more pain when you get up. No more pain. Just keep stay there for a while. Holy Spirit is working. You love Jesus? I do. He loves you more. <laughs> Amen. Okay, we're going to close the service, but before we do, let's stand up. Come. You're going to walk with me. Come. Okay. Come, walk with me. Leave that thing. Give it to me. Come. 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 It's gone. What do you feel? What do you feel? Um. Bend down. Is it stiff? Does it hurt? Not as much as it did. Not as much as it did. It's fine. The Holy Spirit is still working in you. It's fine. Give me a hand. Father God, I thank you. Oh, there it is again. The presence of God's there again. <sighs> thank you, Jesus. Can we have a chair quickly? A chair. I just want her to sit down. I just want to pray for her legs. <laughs> Sorry. You know, when the Holy Spirit works, there's a lot of chaos going on sometimes. You still okay? You want to leave? No. I'm going to leave now. Okay, sit down, please. Thank you. Can you hold this? Thank you. Sit with your back right up to the chair's um, 
back. Thank you. Okay, give me your legs. Wow, oh, God's already healed your legs. He's already touched you. Okay. Father God, I thank you. In Jesus' name, that your power is flowing through her legs into her back right now. It's heating up again, your back. You feel it? Yeah. It's heating up again. You know, Jesus prayed for a blind man. Then he said, okay, open your eyes and look around, see what you see. He said, ooh, I see people walking around like trees. He said, okay, <laughs> close them again. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm just a conduit. I'm not the healer. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you are saturated by the presence of God. You feel that? The presence of God on your shoulders, on your back. But I do, there's inflammation. Also, a lot of inflammation in your back. Okay, the inflammation is going down. It's going down. Okay. God's still working. He's still working. He's doing something big. Huge Holy Spirit surgery going on. Okay. Come here. Let's walk again. How does it feel? Better. Much better. Yes. Better or just better? It's much better. Much better. Yes. Enjoy. You're going to have, you could totally pain free. Okay? <laughs> God's healing you completely. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today on the New Life Everyday YouTube channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to receive the latest messages from Pastor Brian and the New Life team. If you enjoyed today's message, be sure to share this video with a friend. To learn more about us, visit our website, newlifeeveryday.com. Again, thanks for watching. God bless.